When I color my flip books, I like to use Copic markers. I use the markers so much that uh, I wanted to make a video showing you guys kind of how and why I use them and give you a few tips to use as you color your own flip books. So Copic markers, they're, a, they're an art marker which uses an alcohol-based ink, and that makes a huge difference in blending colors. When you're coloring with regular markers, if you try to blend the colors, it tends to mess up your marker tips, the colors bleed, but with an alcohol-based ink, you can blend, you can draw right on top of other colors, and it doesn't ruin your marker tips. And that's something I wanted to show you guys. The nibs on these markers are changeable, so if one wears out, or if you, know, you cut the nib off with scissors to make a flipbook about dots, you can replace it really easily. I like to use tweezers to remove the nibs so I don't get my fingers all covered with ink. Just pop the old one out and put the new one in, super easy. I tend to go through a lot of ink on some flip books, like uh, in, my, in my slime flip book, for example, I went through at least a couple bottles of refill green ink, which is great because then you don't have to throw out your markers, you just refill them and keep reusing them over and over. The best way to do it is just to pop out the chisel nib and then inject the ink right into the barrel. You still wanna go a little bit slow, just don't rush it so you don't overflow. And I'm fairly certain these little marks on the side of the bottle indicate how much ink equates to a full marker. So that'll help you, so, you know, as you're filling it, you don't overfill it. And again, tweezers are gonna be your best friend to help keep your hands from getting messy. I also like to put a sheet of paper down when I'm refilling ink because you inevitably will get a couple drops onto your desk otherwise. So these refill ink bottles, these are actually a newer style and I like them much better than the old bottles um, because they actually fit in my marker holder where the old style refill bottles don't fit. So but these new bottles, they're much better, they're great uh, and I love how they fit in with the rest of the markers. Copic makes a few different styles of markers. So first there are the, the Chow markers. They have a, a round barrel. They're a bit less expensive. They have a chisel tip in one end and a brush tip on the other. It's nice and flexible, like a brush. I really like the, the brush uh, tip for most of what I do. Um, but if, you know, maybe I'm filling a large area of, of solid color, I might switch and use the chisel tip for that. Um, that's just kind of a personal preference. I'm sure there are artists who love using the chisel tip for everything, uh, but me, I find that most of the time I'm using the, the brush tip. These are Copic Sketch markers, which is what I use most of the time. Um, you know, they have like the same chisel tip and the brush end, but they have an oval shaped barrel, which does a much better job of keeping them from rolling off your desk. And I like the way they feel in the hand a little bit better. There are also the Copic Classic markers, and I've actually never used the Classic markers myself. And my impression is that the, you know, like the sketch markers and the chow markers are, are more popular at this point. Cost-wise, if you're looking for the least expensive way to get started with Copics, then the chow um, are gonna save you a little bit of money. Okay, let's talk about doing large areas of solid color. It can be challenging to get a, a solid large area with uniform color. One way you can do it, you can take the chisel tip, go one line at a time. You end up with you know visible lines the first layer you do, but then as you go back over it again with another layer, uh, it kind of saturates the color more and reduces the lines somewhat, but you're still gonna see them. Most of the time what I like to do is sort of a scribbly circular pattern and I try to just work fast enough that the ink blends evenly as I go. It's still not perfectly uniform, but I usually like it better than you know seeing a bunch of lines. One factor that affects how your blending looks is how long you let a layer of color dry before going over it again. So here on the right side, I'm overlapping it while it's nice and fresh, and you can see the overlap lines are somewhat blurred and softer looking. But now here on the left side, I'll skip ahead, okay? I let this side dry for about a minute. And now when I color over that dry layer of color, you can see that the overlap lines are sharper and a bit more obvious compared to the right side where the overlap is softer looking. So either way, it's kind of a style choice, something to keep in mind. Okay, shading. Something fairly easy you can do, which is gonna add some nice dimensionality to your picture, is just some basic shading. Even if you keep it really simple, it's gonna add a nice touch and just kind of level up your color. On a basic level, you just wanna think about where your light source is and then where your shading would be based on where your light is coming from. So if I have a ball and the sun is up here, then I want my shaded side to be here, opposite of where the light is coming from. I often like to find, say, three colors that work well for an object and make almost a, a gradient using those three colors. In my, in my hot dog flip book, I used three colors for the hot sauce, three colors for the bun, and three colors for the hot dog. For storing markers, I currently use these plastic cases. Now, I should mention these cases are not from Copic, uh, but this is just what I currently use. Each layer is stackable, so you can make it as tall as you want. You can also uh, offset the layers if you want it slightly angled. Again, uh, just what I currently use, but there might be better options. There are several types of cases that Copic offers if you want to check them out. 
Okay, and colors. There are hundreds of colors available. I prefer to go to the art store and just pick the exact colors I want for a specific project. But if you're good at blending, you can also just create lots of your own custom colors, even if you only have a smaller number of basic colors. But I like to just go to the art store, like I said, and pick out just the specific colors I want for each project. Okay, I want to talk about one of the coolest markers that Copic makes. It's this one, number zero. It is literally no color. It's transparent ink, and they call this the colorless blender. The idea is this is a this is a marker for blending other colors that you put down. But the coolest thing I like to use the color blender for is almost like an eraser, where you can sort of use it to to push the ink away or almost push the ink deeper into the page to kind of get rid of it. For example, when I made my big Kamehameha flipbook, I used the colorless blender to draw the tiny cloud right over the top of black ink. So it wasn't, you know, it's not that it's technically erasing the black ink, but it's like pushing it out of the way, which is really cool. And pens, I almost forgot to talk about Copic pens. These are called multi-liners. It's, it's Copic ink, but in a fine tipped pen. The tips are replaceable, which is great. The ink is replaceable and they have some super fine tips. This is a 0.03 super fine, so you can draw the tiniest little details. So yeah, those are my basic tips on using Copic markers and their multi-liners. Um, I'll put links in the description below, including the, the storage case that I use. I'm also gonna put links to Copic's website and the best places to buy Copic markers in the description below. They're not inexpensive, but if you're looking for a good art marker and good fine-tipped pens, I would definitely recommend checking them out. And the final thing about Copic that I thought you guys would be interested in is every year they do an art competition called the Copic Award. Um, the application period for the 2022 award it has already closed, but you can check out this year's entries and get updates for future competitions at copicaward.com. Stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.